Hello friends, welcome to my channel Literary Diary. Friends, today's video is based on the general theories about translation studies. Actually friends, recently I finished my course on translation theory and practice and I faced lot of difficulties to understand and to search about these theories. That's why I'm making this video so that you guys who are tackled with translation th studies and who are interested to know about the translation related theories get help from this. So let's get started. Okay, so while dealing with translation studies, we first have to know that what is the definition of translation. So translation is the transfer of a text or word written or spoken from one language which is called source language or ASL to another which is called target language or TL. The English word translation derives from the Latin word translatio which comes from trans mean, means across and ferry means to carry or to bring. Thus, translation is a carrying across or a bringing across. Susan Besnett, in the history of translation theory section of her book, Translation Studies, sees translation as emerging again and again with different degrees of emphasis in accordance with different concepts of knowledge and communication. So, translation generally involves the rendering of a source language text into a target language text so as to ensure that the surface meaning of the two will be approximately similar and the structures of the ASL will be preserved as possible but not so closely so that the TL structures will not be seriously distorted. So translation is thus a process which connects different languages and culture and in the process of translation separate worlds and cultures are bridged together. So our next point is using translation in various fields. Throughout the history, written or spoken, translation plays a crucial role in interhuman communication. The idea of translation holds different meanings in different levels. It could be business translation, literary translation and many more. Though the translation for communica communication purpose is generally called interpretation. Although the terms translation and interpretation are often used interchangeably, but by strict definition, translation refers to the written language and interpretation to the spoken word. Translation is the action of interpretation of the meaning of a text and subsequent production of an equivalent text that communicates the same message in another language. The next topic is important theories of translation. As we all know that translation activity is very ancient. The very first translation known to us are the bilingual inscriptions during the Egyptian Old Kingdom as far back in to as 3000 BC. Cicero and Horace made an important distinction between word for word and sense for sense translation. From the ancient to modern period, there were introduced various theories related to translation. George Steiner divides the literature on the theory of translation into four periods. The first period which extends from the statesman of Horace and Cicero on translation under Fraser Titler's essays on the principles of translation in 1791. The second period runs up to 1946 and is characterized as a period of theory and hermeneutic inquiry with the development of a vocabulary and methodology of approaching translation. The third period begins with the publication of the first papers on machine translation in the 1940s. It is characterized by the introduction of structural linguistics and communication theory into the study of translation. And the last is the fourth period which has its origin in the early 1960s. It is characterized by interpretation. So in the preface to Ovid's epistles in 1680, John Dryden reduces all translation into three categories. The first is metaphys. This is word by word and line by line translation which corresponds to literal translation. The second one is paraphrase which means translation with latitude where the author is kept in view by the translator but his words are not so strictly followed as his sense. This involves changing of whole phrases and more or less corresponds to faithful translation. The third one is imitation. Forsaking both words and sense, this corresponds to Abram Coley's very free translation and is more or less adaptation. Then the next point is in 1954, Joseph Casagrande describes various translation. First is pragmatic translation, which refers to the translation of a message with accuracy of the Accuracy of the information conveyed in the ASL. Translation of scientific and technical texts come under this category. Number second is aesthetic translation. In this type of translation, the translator takes into account the emotions and the means which convey them. Translation of literature comes under this category. Number third is ethnographic translation. The objective of this type of translation is to ex explain the cultural context of the source and target language versions of the text. Number fourth is 
linguistic translation. This type of translation is concerned with the equivalent meanings and the constituent morphemes of the TL text. Roman Jacobson in his seminal paper on linguistic aspects of translation in 1959 proposed about three kinds of translation, intralingual translation or rewording. This is an interpretation of verbal signs by means of other signs of the same language. Example is music, picture. Number second is interlingual translation or translation proper. This is an interpretation of verbal signs by means of some other languages. Example from Hindi text to English. Number third is intersemiotic translation or transmutation. This is an interpretation of verbal signs by means of signs of non-verbal sign systems. Example from novel to film. In the textbook on translation originally published in 1988, Peter Newmark proposed eight kind of translation. First is word for word translation. It is often demonstrated as interlineal translation with the TL immediately below the SL words and the SL word order is preserved and the words translated singly by their most common meanings out of context. Number second is literal translation. In this translation, the SL grammatical constructions are converted to their nearest TL equivalents, but the lexical words are again translated singly out of context. The third one is faithful translation. This kind of translation attempts to reproduce the precise con contextual meaning of the original within the constraints of the TL grammatical structures. Number fourth is semantic translation. This differs from faithful translation only in as far as it must take more account of the aesthetic value of the SL text, comprising on meaning where appropriate so that no assonance, wordplay or repetition jars in the finished version. Number fifth is communicative translation. This translation attempts to render the exact contextual meaning of the original in such a way that both content and language are readily acceptable and comprehensible to the readership. Number six is idiomatic translation. This type of translation reproduces the message of the original but tends to distort nuances, meaning, nuances of meaning by preferring colloquialisms and idioms where these do not exist in the original. Number seven is free translation. It reproduces the matter without the manner or the content without the form of the original. And then number eight is adaptation. It is the freest form of translation used mainly for plays and poetry. The themes, characters and plots are usually preserved. The SL culture converted to the TL culture and the text rewritten. Then the most important topic is the role of the translator. The person who should translate is generally called the translator. The translator of a literary text will have to bridge the gap, small or large, between cultures. The main problem of the translator is how to comply with cultural issues. For example, which issues to take priority, the cultural aspects of the source language community, the cultural aspects of the target language community, or perhaps a combination of the two. French humanist Etienne Dolet in How to Translate Well from One Language to Another in 1540 established five principles for translators such as follows. Number one is the translator must fully understand the sense and meaning of the original author. Number two is the translator should have a perfect knowledge of both the SL and TL. Number third is the translator should avoid word for word renderings. Number fourth is the translator should use forms of speech in common use. And number fifth is the translator should choose and order words appropriately to produce the correct tone. In the epistle to the reader of George Chapman's translation of Iliad, he states that the translator must avoid word for word renderings, the translator must attempt to reach the spirit of the original and the translator must avoid overloose translation. And then the most important point is decoding and recording while translating. So translation involves two types of activities. One is the understanding of the message of the SL or decoding and the second is the expression of this message in TL or recording. Eugenie Nida has diagrammatically shown it in the following way. So at first we have to take one source language text, then we have to analyze it and then we have to transfer it and then we have to restructuring the word into the target language and then we finally find the receptor language translation. So this is the diagrammatic structure of all translation.
to decode the meaning of the essay in its entirely the translator must interpret and analyze all the features of a text which is a process that requires in depth knowledge of the grammar syntax semantics and idioms of the essay as well as the culture of its speakers the translator also needs the same in depth knowledge of the tl to record and encode the meaning of the essay according to susan besnet and andrew lefever the study of culture always involves an examination of the processes of encoding and decoding that comprise translation so as in the case of translating the english words hello and yes into italian language hello in italian is pronto ciao and yes in italian is si then at first we have to take the word and started analyzing it like hello is used for friendly greeting and arrival and yes is used to show affirmative sign so that after analyzing the translator started to reconstructing or restructuring the words with other words which are related to arrival or greeting and affirmative signs in the target language and by doing this at last found the target word so in the following structure we will get the idea so the essay text is english yes then we have to analyze it that yes is used for affirmative signs and then we have to transfer it and then we have to restructure in the word into the other words of the target language and then we find the receptor language text which is c so friends this is the basic idea of translation and if you like this video and if you find it relevant for your studies then please subscribe my channel and don't forget to like share and comment so bye bye see you in the next session